Welcome to the first part of this video, where we will build a simple but very useful circuit using a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer, a BC547 transistor, and a 12 volt LED. I will begin by applying some solder on all three pins of the potentiometer, VCC, output, and ground. Next, I take a BC547 transistor, which is a commonly used NPN transistor in electronic projects. I will solder the emitter pin of the transistor to the VCC pin of the potentiometer. This provides the main current path for our circuit. Then I will connect the base pin of the transistor to the output pin of the potentiometer. This connection is very important because the potentiometer will control how much current flows into the transistor's base, which in turn controls how much current flows through the collector and powers the LED. Now I will apply some solder on the collector pin of the transistor to prepare it for the LED connection. This is our 12 volt LED, which is specially designed to work directly with 12 volt power sources. I will solder the negative pin of the LED to the collector pin of the transistor and the positive pin of the LED to the ground pin of the potentiometer. This way, the transistor will act like a switch or dimmer, controlling the LED's brightness based on the potentiometer's output. Next, I will apply some solder on the VCC and ground pins of the potentiometer so that they can be connected to the power supply easily. Finally, I will connect the negative wire of the 12 volt battery to the VCC pin of the potentiometer and the positive wire of the battery to the ground pin of the potentiometer. This might seem reversed compared to usual VCC GND convention, but in this arrangement, it works with the transistor's polarity to control the LED. Now comes the exciting part. When I connect the battery and rotate the knob of the potentiometer, the LED brightness increases and decreases smoothly. This shows how the potentiometer and transistor together can regulate current flow to control light intensity. The potentiometer changes the voltage going into the transistor's base pin. The BC547 transistor works like a variable switch, the more voltage it receives at the base, the more current it allows to pass from the emitter to the collector. As a result, the LED connected to the collector receives more or less current depending on the potentiometer setting, which directly controls its brightness. In this electronics project, I am going to use three BC547 transistors, which are very common NPN transistors, often used for amplification and switching purposes. These tiny components are the backbone of our circuit and will allow us to detect electricity in a wire without making direct contact. First, I will carefully bend the emitter and collector pins of all three transistors at a right angle. Next, I will cut the collector pin of the first transistor to make it shorter, apply some solder on it, and prepare it for connection. Now. I take a red LED, which will serve as our output indicator. I bend its negative pin, trim it short, and solder it directly to the collector pin of the first transistor. This way, whenever the transistor conducts, the LED will light up and act as a signal for us. After that, I trim the positive pin of the LED, apply some solder, and connect a 330 ohm resistor to it. This resistor is important because it limits the current flowing through the LED, preventing it from burning out and ensuring the LED has a long life. Next, I solder the emitter pin of the second transistor to the base pin of the first transistor, creating a chain connection. Then, I connect the collector pin of the second transistor to the resistor attached to the LED. This step allows the second transistor to act as a driver, controlling the LED's brightness and switching. Now, I take the third transistor and solder its emitter pin to the base pin of the second transistor and its collector pin to the same resistor line. To make this circuit detect electricity, I take a piece of copper wire and make a small coil out of it. This coil will act as a simple sensor antenna to pick up electromagnetic fields around live electrical wires. I solder this coil to the base pin of the third transistor, which is the input stage of our circuit. Now, I connect a 9-volt battery, 
the positive terminal goes to the collector of the second transistor and the negative terminal goes to the emitter of the first transistor. This powers up the entire circuit and makes it ready to work. Finally, our circuit is complete. Let's test it. This project uses the principle of electromagnetic induction. When current flows through an electric wire, it creates a small magnetic field around it. The copper coil senses this field and sends a tiny signal to the base of the transistor chain. The three BC547 transistors then amplify this weak signal step by step until it is strong enough to light the LED. I bring a live electric wire from my soldering iron close to the coil, and as soon as it detects the electromagnetic field, the red LED lights up, indicating the presence of electricity without touching the wire directly. If you enjoyed this project, let me know in the comments how you would improve or use this non-contact voltage detector. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more amazing electronics DIY tutorials. Welcome to the third project of this video, where we will build a simple yet amazing circuit using just a BC547 transistor. This project will show how we can use basic components to create a blinking LED effect, which is often seen in decorative lights and small electronics projects. First, here is a 1000 UF capacitor. I will carefully solder the positive leg of the capacitor to the emitter pin of the BC547 transistor. This connection sets up the base for the charging and discharging cycle of the capacitor. Next, I will apply some solder on the collector pin of the transistor and also on the negative leg of the capacitor. Now, I will take an LED that will be our visual indicator. I solder the positive pin of the LED to the collector pin of the transistor and the negative pin of the LED to the negative leg of the capacitor. This way, the LED will turn on and off depending on how the capacitor charges and discharges. After that, I will solder a 1K ohm resistor to the positive leg of the capacitor. The resistor controls the charging speed of the capacitor. A larger resistor would slow down the blinking, while a smaller resistor would make the LED blink faster. So this resistor plays a critical role in adjusting the blink rate. Once the main connections are complete, I will carefully trim the extra pins with a cutter to make the circuit neat, tidy, and safe from short circuits. Now it's time to add the power supply. I will connect the negative wire of a 12 volt battery to the negative leg of the capacitor and the positive wire of the battery to the free end of the resistor. This gives the circuit the required energy to function. Finally, when I connect the battery, the magic happens the LED starts blinking automatically. The blinking continues as long as the battery is connected, creating a simple but fascinating effect. The circuit works on the charging and discharging cycle of the capacitor. When the capacitor charges through the resistor, current flows into the transistor, allowing the LED to turn on. Once the capacitor is full, it starts discharging, which cuts off the LED. This cycle repeats continuously, making the LED blink. The resistor value and the capacitor size decide the blinking speed. Larger capacitors and resistors give slower blinks, while smaller ones give faster blinks. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more exciting electronics projects that you can easily try at home.